Okay, let's go. I love those renders. Those are so cool. I love watching those. My voice is a disaster, scorched desert. Let me... I'll talk about that in a minute. Let's get to the important stuff besides the con. Previous business unresolved. I owe a Christmas present. And it's time to spin the wheel. As you can see, the entry number up there in the top right, it's over a thousand. This is what it doesn't even show, there's too many. And our winner is Dead X Obit. Whoever Dead X Obit is, you just got um, a free tribrid. Congratulations. Now, let me go ahead and pause this for just a second. Okay, just check. That's legit. And that prestige is going out the door to Dead X Hobbit or Hobbit or something. Anyway, um, this set that I'm about to review, the QKZ XHBB Dual DD with the dedicated subwoofer, a la Toothy or Zero, but slightly different tuning. Um, I'm gonna give this away as well. You gotta leave a comment below this video. I'd like you to like and subscribe, please. That would be dope. I'd really appreciate that. Um, but I can't really ask that because of YouTube rules and mm, the way that I'm gonna select the winner is by comment, so it doesn't really relate. But it would be a nice gesture, I'd appreciate that. Um, but the question, for the comment is I'm gonna give you a hint rock and roll now the question who killed the Kennedys it doesn't need to be an essay because that means you didn't get the question um, who killed the Kennedys and I'm a person that loves rock and roll music so that should be your hints right there and I'm gonna end up giving this way be a couple weeks for this one because it's gonna be released on January 1st people gotta to start to get it a couple of the people that I select are going to be people that bought it and I'm going to refund them and a couple of the people that didn't buy it and they're going to get it straight directly to them. So if you feel like oh, I'm going to get penalized if I buy it early, no, you'll get your money back. And if you think I, I don't have the money for it, well, then you might win it. So both sides are going to have a chance to win. I'm actually going to lean it four to the people that got it and gave it a shot and trusted me and one towards someone who's just wanting to win something. That sounds right to me. Four to one four for buyers we'll do it like that um because my throat is so my condition in general is so poor i'm going to finish up for tonight because i can't really speak anymore because my throat's on fire and i'm dizzy and it's hard to um keep my train of thought i've redone this little portion of the video about 10 times i have to reset it because i forget what i'm talking about so i shouldn't even be doing a video but it's been almost seven days since i did one and the algorithm and all that stuff so um, like and subscribe if you can um, that's the end of this part of the video but you won't notice it because I'll just put together another video and splice it and it'll look like nothing except you might notice the lighting is different because it's daytime and also my throat might sound a little bit better because it's an, an, a day later so this is a slowly pieced together video that you're watching right now which is kind of interesting Okay, let's talk about the QKZ X HBB Con. It's a two dynamic driver set. Um, I might throw up some images as I'm talking right now so you can get a closer look at it. That's the package. You can see the new standard symbol for high res audio. I've got some ice cream right here because I can't make it through this video without wrecking my voice. So I'm going to take intermittent breaks and try to edit it so you don't really notice it. I'll do my best. Um, let's go ahead and turn and look at the frequency graph. I've got the truth here zero up as a comparison because I've been praising this thing for months. People saw this coming. I told Kryn directly. I said, I'm going for the same thing. And he said, go for it. Inspire the next. Theory crafting. It's kind of the whole point. Try something. Mm, reinvent the wheel. Mm, Harman single dynamic drivers have been done 50 times. It's time to do double DD variations of Harman and other tunings with two DDs so this is my take on it the bass is of course elevated more that was something that I wanted to do that really didn't take time this project was supposed to come out months ago I was talking about Black Friday release and it never made it because it was the treble that was the problem um, as it turned out the treble is compared to the zero much more laid back it's got a long gradual um, elevation and it peaks at about 3.5k and then it's got a little drop 
with a resonance coupler peak at around 8k and then it's got another little drop at 10k and then it comes back up around 13 or 12.5 and then it falls back away it's pretty much got info going all the way off the scale pretty much for anything that's in my library or any that I've ever really heard using spectrograms where it's just a piece of software that measures audio and so it's not your ears it's just a computer there's not a lot of stuff that's up beyond 15 kilohertz you got to be able to hear it number one and there's not a lot of stuff that has it um, compressed files almost universally don't have it because they cut it off so this tuning is tuning that is going to um, it slams really hard for everything where there's low frequency if it's hip-hop EDM uh, reggae uh, certain rock genres like that um, trance all kinds of stuff this will hammer really hard um, and it's got clean mids because where it cuts off for rock and roll it'll do its job in the same way that I explained and recommended the toothier zero it's not the same as a glide profile but it's fine but it's not the ideal one where you would go for something that's got a little bit more stretch and a, like I said a slide something like the Elysian X that was a compromise with the zero that's a compromise with the con I think that more bass in its tuning actually compensates and also it's got less forward upper mid so I think it sounds better for rock and roll than the zero does but I I listened to the zero a lot I fell in love with that set I wanted this project to get done as soon as I possibly could but there there's this moment where they're like Tr try this one and then you got it and then you're like this this doesn't work do some stuff yourself send it back and say how about this and then okay send it back to us and then we everybody knows that we're in a big delay and this this went on for months I gotta say QKZ is dope um, they were fine but I I had what I wanted um, and they were fine with it but this one took a lot longer than the one DD one and we're coming out in J January this is way way behind schedule happy with the results but sometimes to get to that point you gotta um, the market moves people lose interest it's it's a dangerous little game um, but they put up with me so I appreciate it now let me go ahead and take a look at this real quick the box if as you see if you rub your hands on it these are slightly raised that's high-tech stuff right there that QKZ it for some reason keeps giving me Bob Marley colors green gold and red green gold and red I don't know if you can see that but I'm totally cool with that um, the new standard in high-res audio my symbol right there thank you so much for HPB's kindly assistance in the design and tuning these people are just so dope um, they're like somebody that you know it's hard to explain there's not this hey friend stuff going on it's just like hey bro that's kind of how it goes um so that's just a nice way you can see the two dynamic drivers there the mid treble is right behind the nozzle like you can see in the exploded view and then you've got the larger driver uh behind it which is really dedicated to the low end if you look at this and you think that looks kind of like it's rolling at the end i'll give you kind of a good analogy <coughs> i'm in car audio um the amps are tuned to cross over at a certain point because you don't want subwoofers doing woofer jobs which is to do stuff beyond like 180 or anywhere really near that so your amp is cutting off information beyond a certain point and it's usually 125 to 180 Hertz roughly and it would look maybe something like this if you were to graph that along with your mid drivers and your tweeters now the roll on the other side is would look exactly like what is called a subsonic filter anybody with car audio knows what I'm talking about the lowest of the frequencies right here have a possibility of creating a wobble or a disturbance under high excursion high power that can destroy your driver can really tear it apart so to prevent against those rando bits of info in the low low end you just create a filter in the subsonic between let's say personally I do it at 18 hertz so that would mean that I'm doing the same thing I wouldn't be taking um, the stuff at 20 hertz in the same way it's 30 because the subsonic filters width would do the same thing so this is kind of how a subwoofer should look actually it should be trimmed on the one side because some people said why doesn't it just go straight off at 20 Hertz 
Um, it's inefficient. It's there's not a lot of info there, and going by car audio and the way that it handles the subwoofer, it makes sense to trim down the area that has the most distortion, and that's what the left side of this little bump is, and then the right side is the crossover that everybody's familiar with. So, um, looks dope on a graph. Sounds dope itself. You can get mic or no mic version. I'm going to go ahead and stop this video for a second because I'm going to eat some of this Mao Vanilla. Won an award, International Taste Institute Superior Taste Award. Three stars. And I'm going to I'm going to hit that cuz my throat's starting to burn up. So, excuse me. Sweet, sweet, sweet nectar of the god. Mm. Mm. Okay, I'm just doing that to cool down my throat. Open up the box. And you're faced with a gold coin. It's not real gold, obviously, at $40. It's quite weighty, so I don't know what it is. Um, but it's a gold coin. So, moving along. The buds on this one are slightly larger than the original QKZ that I did, obviously, because it's got to house the two drivers. This is the sample shells that were created. These are not identical to the Zero, obviously. You can know that by mm, a couple things. One is the... Let me show you, actually. Let me put these back inside here. The original one, the TE Zero has a kind of a shroud built around the two pin, but it is probably quite similar to this actually, but it's got the shroud built around it. The most obvious thing that you're going to notice on the Truthier Zero, the driver that's right below the nozzle is actually creating a kind of a bump right there, which is causing discomfort for me in long listening sections. You can see it maybe right there. I, I wanted that out and they did it this does not have the same lip on the edge you can see that they're quite different if i lay this flat on a table it will lay flat because it's got a flat surface this is a little bit more rolled so it won't so they are one's inspired by the other but they're not identical um and the nozzle angles are slightly different as well so that's uh the te zero and this is this one and let me see if i can go ahead and grab for a size comparison it's really not that much bigger than the original collab i did with them i guess it is actually it's not really that much bigger actually hmm put that back over there now where'd that come from okay so If you feel offended that I'm eating ice cream during video, I apologize a lot. Um, if you had this, what I've got, you can maybe understand it. I'm trying to manage so that I can talk before my voice totally collapses. And also, I'm getting dizzy as I talk because my fatigue is just going through the roof. I'm going to skip what's inside here. It's a cable. Okay, I won't skip it. No collab. Open it up and you've got the white plastic case. Feel like I'm dying. Open it up. You get some really cool tips actually come with this one. I don't know if they came with the other one. Got a decent cable. Um, let me close that. If I feel like I'm rushing, sometimes it is because this stuff's coming in waves. And then underneath this is nothing. It's just the two IMs. Okay. I'll put that together that together so there's some music there's the graph again I'm advising people that trust me to grab this because I haven't tuned anything quite like this and having a subwoofer dedicated to just the 200 and below frequencies 200 Hertz is really kind of amazing in the way it plays back everything because you're getting the slam like in a car audio system because you've got a dedicated low-end driver and then like in a good car system you've got your mids 
um, your separates, your tweeters, and so you get the whole. Some car audio systems, people who are out there watching this, are pretty absolutely amazing, and are on par better than home systems because of the precision with time correction, where you're sitting, distance from your ear to the calculations that you can make with your head unit. It's just an amazing the deadening of the space because it's a very controlled volume of space you can tune that to an amazing performance um, for the driver or you can center it between the driver and the passenger and make it almost awesome pretty awesome actually but for yourself you can make it perfect um, reference level with subwoofers and with everything else so having a subwoofer inside this set it's pretty amazing listening to my library because it doesn't affect the vocals really and because the the mid bass is already where it cuts itself out the totality of the vocals is really not touched at all so depending on how you want that done that could be good or not but the the driver that's taking care of the low frequency is not interfering with the driver that's taking care um, of everything else including almost all of the vocals because of the way that it's crossed over and the way that it's tuned and I'm gonna eat some ice cream so I'm gonna stop right here sorry okay let's talk about some music um, starting with the sub bass pretty much deck mix stuff like from a Roland 808 pack like sardines and crushed in box Tupac violent kill Jill special nod to massive attack angel because this just does that really good uh, Easy E sipping on a forty, um, tracks like that. This this set absolutely hammers. It hits really really hard. It brings a smile to my face. I enjoy it a lot. It's got no problems in this part of the frequency response at all. Um, as we move into bass guitar, Sultans of Swing, Black Sabbath, Violent Femmes. There is a tuck tightness. <coughs> that comes with this type of tuning however like the zero please take a moment to go look at my zero videos there's several of them top five videos um the video itself i've been talking about this zero a lot people should have maybe seen this coming there's a there's a way of playing back those instruments that it kind of blends in because it gives balance to everything and that's a glide that looks like I said, something like the Elysian X or any other, it doesn't have to be expensive. Something like that is most uh, conducive to what seems like a natural replay. And I have a lot of people on my Discord and also that watch this channel and they're musicians. And they know what I'm talking about. You can have a flat bass, flat. And as long as you're not pushing up one thing over the other too much, it can sound acceptable, almost monitor and studio like. If you lift up the sub bass and you gradually glide it into the mids very smoothly and subtly, you give a little bit more mm, authenticity, energetic. Because a, a bass guitar, when you're in a room with it, whether it's plugged in or not, it's got a it's got some energy to it. It's it's a musical instrument. That kind of a glide that's pushed up a little bit, it's a little bit better. When you have a, a tuning like this where you abruptly decrease the amount of emphasis between 200 and 230 hertz, 250 hertz, you're going to notice it. It's not the ideal replay. But I've done several sets that do the other. And I'd like to have a variety in my collection where I can say to other people, where you're more into classical the guitars, um, you're more vocal centric. Um, you do like your slam though because you'll switch into some 808 or some trip hop now and then this will definitely have you covered so i'd like to have if you're really focused on rock and roll this would be close to the truth or zero i think it's a little less fatiguing the truth or zero let's take a look at it again there's two things going on here i'm starting to get in my groove now if both of these we can apply <coughs> this You've got the mid bass tucked in, okay? So that's giving you a leaner, dry replay. Both of these do that. Mine more so than actually the zero, the Kryn collab. Then you get up to the ear gain, starting at around one kilohertz. 
When you've got that tucked in leaner, drier mid bass because of the lack of warmth and note weight, it's a psychoacoustic illusion because you're actually you're more focused on the the push up or the amplitude of the upper mids because instead of a sense of warmth and balance and just what is familiar, you get a slightly atypical replay with this because there is that dryness, but you do have some low end slam but it's not quite as what you're used to with a bass guitar or drum kit. And then the vocals come in, and your ear immediately catches it because there's this gap of n expected info, which is right in that range that I'm looking at, around 200 hertz, that's not really there as much as you might be used to. And so the upper mids kind of make themselves known to you more than a graph would indicate. So you're kind of magnifying something that if that had a glide, that would not be a problem at all. But because... That's how one affects the other. The tuning of the mid bass and the leanness makes your focus e more easy to be drawn and stolen, steel focus, by the upper mids. Now, this is why this took a long time to finish, because we did a bunch of stuff going back and forth, and I kept saying, I, wanna, I want that to be a more gradual attack. And if you put up the Thea Audio Oracle, I really like the way that that does. That's really gradual. The vocals sound natural and sweet. Female vocals sound fantastic. Really wanted to go for that. We tried a bunch of stuff. They hit on one that they thought was exactly what I was asking for. It wasn't. That was back in October. And that was really the last shot to nail it in and get it produced before Black Friday. And I just sat there for a day and got some mails back like, are you sure? And nobody ever pressured me. This company's dope. But there was that like pause while you're typing live and exchanging and I'm like I'd like to just keep going um, and try the new one so I, I can wait if you guys can and you know wait for five minutes while nothing's going on and sudden typing balls move and then okay okay send send that back um, because their graph measurement systems are different from mine so got to send the samples back um, and then got back the other one which was November and they nailed it and then I was like you guys can go right into production with this and yeah slow down dude you, you know the universe you in the middle no <gasps> there's other projects going on we can't move so fast like that anymore but what I wanted to do was elevate the bass um, just give it more slam and from 100 hertz to 30 hertz it's about plus 5 dB and then the angle of attack on the upper mids, which impacts the perception of vocals and how forward they are directly. Like the mid bass and that cut can impact the perception of a bassist and how forward in the mix he is or how back he is, kind of neutered. These frequency graphs don't tell you many things, but there are some fundamental things they will give you a great indication of. And I'm talking about my library when I say that. Um, so you're looking at that blue now, which has got less of an angle than the zero, which is what I wanted really from the beginning, and I finally got it. And then the upper mids to treble transition is pretty similar, and then there's, depending on you, the way that you put in the tip, um, you can get something that looks kind of similar to the zero, but usually no. It's usually something that looks just like what I'm showing you right there, something that's got more of a waterfall or step down like without any precipitous fall down um so they they nailed that i just rambled really bad didn't i oh I'm spilling ice cream i've eaten more ice cream since i was a little kid this is a brutal human condition human condition um health thing for three years i kind of watched on the side and thought i don't know i won't get into it because then i'll have problems with this video but my empathy to those people out there that got hit with like in this way oh wow tear your whole life make you feel like you're about to die all kinds of stuff so back to basic time it's not the most ideal type of tuning for bass guitars and drums, and that's obvious. 
And I'm not trying to get around it or skip around it. I'm saying that the Tuthia Zero is something I loved and gushed over immediately because of its basic fundamental design. And I don't need everything I have in the world to be tuned exactly the same. A $10, a $15, a $50, a $200. I don't need them all to sound the same. I don't need different sound qualities of the same tuning. It's redundant. I don't even... So I don't want to do that with my collabs anymore if I can. So I'm intentionally breaking away from that. Would I have done this if the Zero hadn't come out? Probably not, straight up honest. But it did come out, and I did listen to it, and I was immediately blown away. Sent the person that's behind it, said, wow. I felt like somebody put their neck on foot on my neck and said, F your dreams. I think I typed exactly that to him. He had to feel good. Um, I, I wasn't impressed with... Impressed, I wasn't... The other collabs weren't my thing at all. Uh, but that one absolutely just blew my brains away because it was it was creative. Um, it was forward thinking. It was taking the hobby into a new direction, a new whole series of potentials because of that not simple but basic idea of why don't we take a driver and make it dedicated to the low end frequencies, like really genuinely dedicated, not something that just kind of does a lot of work and then glides into the mids. No, it's in the base region and it that's all it does and it doesn't do anything else. And a, a nice graph will kind of reflect that. Brilliant stuff. I'm glad uh, to have my stuff in there. Now, let's get to the drums and I'm going to be talking about If I don't eat this ice cream, I'm gonna it's gonna start to be scorched desert in my throat. Limelight, Moby Dick, um, Neil Peart, John Bonham. The kick drum <coughs> actually doesn't sound that bad. It sounds fine if you don't have ADHD or Asperger's. Honestly, I listen to stuff and I listen fifteen times in a row to a fifteen second portion. It's not normal. I listen to the gear and I don't listen to music. And that's not the way the people who buy stuff listen to it. So there's a gap there, but that's the only way I know how to review. Um, so the drums sound uh, great, actually. They sound better than the bass guitar and less impacted until we get to the kick drum on something like Led Zeppelin's when the levee breaks off of that really kind of <coughs> untitled fourth album. And then if you listen to that, you can start to realize the impact that that kind of a tuning will have um, on a kick drum, especially a very much famously produced kick drum. Um, it sounds just like a regular kick drum. It's like, that sounds like you're picking little stuff like it's a kick drum I and mean, it sounds like a kick drum what's the problem problem is it's produced to be a substantial kick drum and part of it the beginning part of it does sound substantial you can feel the power coming and then it just kind of falls away that's what happens with that kind of tuning the power of it is greater than on the zero but because there's more energy in the low end but if you're expecting that exact precise um as it was reviewed by their peers in, I think, 1971, you're gonna, it's going to be slightly different. You're going to hear all the toms. Everything's going to sound fine. When you get to the kick drum, it's going to seem notably um, like they used to filter or they they trimmed it compared to the original release, like a, like a remastered version or something is what this would sound like. I, Neil Peart actually sounds great in Limelight and a lot of other stuff. It's the Bonham kick drum that I listen to a lot, which might be a problem sometimes. Um, but I'll just keep doing it. So drums are good. You probably won't notice it most of the time, but if you want to get an example of what this does, listen to a set that's got a glide, listen to this album, listen to the track, um, when the levee breaks, and then listen to this set, and then you'll notice, ah, oh, I see what he's talking about. This is a user out there named Hobby Talk. And he's a, he plays bass guitar. I think he plays regular guitar. The musicians, they can tune by ear. They can tune their own instruments by ear. Michael Bruce is a, is a musician too. Even among musicians, there's a different sense of what's ideal because they're, um, 
they're going for different things because they're they're all unique and the, the music that they listen to. However, a tucked bass and how that impacts, uh, you know, uh, four, five, drop four, uh, EADG, um, a regular four string bass guitar. That's kind of universally known to all musicians. It's not really a debatable thing like a lot of stuff in this hobby is. It sounds like it was tuned correctly, and it's I can hear that it was tuned correctly, or there seems to be some kind of suck out there a little bit. Like one or two of the strings sounds a little bit like it's lost some of its life. That's Everybody would agree on that. A novice that's never touched a bass guitar and a person that has one as they're watching this video behind them on the wall or on the floor. Hopefully it's not flat on the floor. That's everybody knows that. Um, vocals, Led Zeppelin, Robert Plant. Um, the vocals on this are pretty impressive. There is no bass getting in the way. Female vocals sound amazing on this, like the Wilson sisters and Fleetwood Mac. S Stevie Nicks sounds about as good as I've ever heard her on this type of tuning because she's got a throaty female voice that doesn't need any assistance um, and can't take any actually. This album, Rumors, sounds epic on this set. So if you're a fan of this, you pro you would most certainly like this. It it's, sounds dope. Um, male vocals sometimes sound a little bit lean and dry, um, in my opinion. If you're a fan of, um, you know, tuck variations, for example, that is something I think makes vocals sound in a way that are not always my thing if you like that kind of vocal replay this is very close to that if not the ideal version of what that is um there's no coloration whatsoever there's no husk there's no lift there's no anything getting in the way and crowding out the lower regions of the male vocals female vocals are sweet and pristine because there's nothing getting in their way sounds excellent um so i think vocals are one of the strong points of this set you get to strings and vivaldi this is probably the apex of where this sounds good. If you're a person that listens to classical music and you never heard the zero, or you heard the zero and you thought that sounds a little bit too intense because the upper mids were slightly forward and there's that gap where the bass is being cut off just before the mids get going, this would be perfect for you because the gain is a little bit, the attack is slightly less, the bass is more, it's not going to get in the way because it's not really it's only in the parts where it's in the mix and there's not a lot of stuff that exists there um, in a classical there's sections and stuff it doesn't create a wobble um, or any oddity in the replay and the fatigue that you get from a string section piano keys sound excellent let's take a look at that again just because of the mid section between 200 and the gain at 1k it's pretty flat great for piano keys um, this has been the most bizarre video I've ever done. And I probably shouldn't do it, and I should apologize. However, if somebody, had, if if Lin, Lin, Lillian had sent a mail and said, I really need a vid for this, just like another set, not my own club, can you get it done? For all the kindness that I've been shown for all the years and understanding and patience and me growing up as a man, I'd do the same thing. I'd just be like, I'm going to eat ice cream in the video. If you're cool with that, I'll I'll drop it. So this isn't just because it's for me. I did it because this is what you're supposed to do. When, if I'm not in a bed with an IV, I can get this done. And I just did. Um, so, highly recommend it. It's <laughs> $35. Um, now, if you grab it, it'll be 30 9 um, later, so it'll be a $40 set and under. Um, trying to think, I'm losing my train of thought. There's a giveaway. Comment below. Question was Who killed the Kennedys? The comment would be the answer. And then someone's going to win. The prestige was announced in this video already because I'll put, clip it together. Um, and that's it. Take care of yourself. Health is a trip. You don't really, really appreciate it. I, I, I've said that before. And then 
I forgot because I I really wish that I had I had a baby born on the 24th of December that I've never met and because of this situation that I'm in it's going to be a couple of weeks before that ever happens that's life uh, he's healthy so I'm cool with that next day Christmas day life comes in and says bam your happiness bam sit down son Mr. High on his horse, everything's going your way. Mm, no. No. Wow. Check. I got checked. Um, if you made it through this entire ramble to this point, type your favorite color underneath the answer to the question, who killed the Kennedys? And let me see, because I'm going to give you double. I'm going to copy you twice into the contest because you've made it through the most bizarre, incoherent audio device based review that's probably ever been released on YouTube. I don't know. This is like 40 minutes or something. I, I don't know. Um, God bless you. Thank you so much. This, this is a dope set. I wish I was as excited as I was for um, other collabs because this is better than some of those. I just am physically unable to do that. So I'll let you guys go. Great set. Please pick it up if you can. Remember, four of the five winners of the contest are going to be people that won it. And then they show me that they purchased it. And then I say, bam, PayPal. There's your money back. Enjoy. You just got the set. And you said you like it. And now it's free for you. Bam. And then one person's going to get it straight up free. And that's the way it goes. And I'm going to eat some ice cream. Uh, and I'm out.